All right, Chris, let's get to this yeah. baseball deal. And I want to go another angle with you first uh, because okay. you, uh, you know, you get close to these coaches and their families. And I want to look at Greg Goff's side for just a second. You know, it's a great time for Coach Bohannon. I don't blame Coach Bohannon at all. But you know what? It's a tough time for Greg Goff and his family. I, I've been through that. And, you know, those kind of guys yeah. and assistants kind of get forgotten in this whole thing. And I know, hey, uh, you had a relationship with uh, Coach Goff and you had Philip, but you have a job to do as well. But I just kind of wanted you to kind of maybe let the listeners know the other side of that. That's a tough deal for, for a coach and his family. Uh, and then when the guys hired yesterday, it's even a tougher deal. Just kind of comment about that. Yeah, I you know, and I've, a year ago this time I was I was still doing my show with you guys there on on Tide 1029 and and I you know when Mitch Gaspard announced that he was was leaving the program a year ago I I kind of went into detail about this now you can as a fan um it, it's easy to have your opinion of who you think the coach ought to be and if this coach ain't winning enough then we need to get somebody else, and that's 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 your prerogative as a fan. And certainly, people that invest their time and their money into the program, they are certainly um, at, at liberty to share their opinion and to have their opinion. But just as you said, Barry, there is another side to it. And and last year, this time for those of us that worked really closely with Mitch Gaspard, Andy Phillips, Dax Norris, and had known them for a long time, as I did, more than, than 20 years in the case of those guys. Uh, it, it's tough when you know they're not going to be around anymore because the baseball part aside, you like the people. You enjoy them. Uh, or I did, certainly, in the case of of, uh, of Mitch and his staff. And, and that's the personal side of it that's disappointing. And, and in this case that you just brought up it is very unique. Um you know, I, I was very quick to point out that in my in my personal one-on-one and professional dealings, one-on-one with Greg Goff, I had zero complaints whatsoever. He was accommodating. He was uh, personable. He was professional. He was great to my kids, uh, making sure they came around whenever whenever they could come to a ball game to me and uh, or with me, and uh, I. I had zero complaints with what I dealt with with Greg Goff. Um, there is the family aspect, you know, married four four children, one of one of which, um, you know, leaves going into her senior year of high school. Mm. Okay, They've been in Louisiana only for two years, but still, you build friendships, you build relationships, and now you you go to a place you've never lived before, and one year, less than one year, um, their their worlds are, are are turned over. But it's not just Greg Gall. You know, it's it, it's Terry Rooney, it's it's Derek Simmons, it's Jake Wells, uh, it's Michael Chadwick, baseball operations guys. Those it's those people, all of whom have families, and you've uprooted. You, you've come into what is um, a, a phenomenal opportunity professionally for each of those men and for their families. And a year later, that's not the situation anymore, and there's uncertainty, and you've got to go and figure out what's, what's next. I'm not questioning whether this, a change needed to be made. That, that's not the statement I'm making. Sure. All, I'm sa- all I'm doing is, is to your point, there is a personal dynamic, and I know people will talk about the, the money and well, he's paid well. And okay, that's fine. But but you're coming at it from a standpoint and with the mindset that money is everything. Yeah. And and I'll tell you, for most or for and I won't say for most people, for at, at this particular moment, the money may be able to ensure the next few weeks, months. And in the case maybe of Coach Golf, with that financial dynamic, it it takes care of the day to day for for a couple of years or so. But it doesn't change the upheaval that takes place in your family, and that's very tough. And again, I know most fans don't care one bit about that, 
but it but it is a reality. Now, I will also say, because you're probably going to ask me about it, and I won't spend much time on it, um, I think when a coach comes in, whether it's Mitch Gaspard, who went from being an assistant for a long time under a friend of his and Jim Wells, uh, to now being the head coach or then being the head coach, whether it's Greg Goff replacing Mitch Gaspar, whoever follows. And again, whether you've been a part of that staff or whether you're from completely the outside, you've got to right put your, your rules in place and what your expectations are for your team and set the tone for what you your program needs to be going forward. I think, in my personal opinion, um, Greg's approach, his rules – are his rules, and he's he's entitled to make those. But I think the mindset may have been that I need to come in and clean up a program. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that that was the case with this group of young men that that he inherited. Uh, I don't think that's the case of what the program, in terms of its health and its condition, was. Was it a program that needed to be elevated? Absolutely. Mitch Gaspard knew that, and Mitch felt like somebody else needed to to take the reins at that time, or at least that was my impression that Mitch felt that way. We never had that one-on-one conversation. I shouldn't put words in, in a man's mouth that, that hadn't been the coach in a year, but that's my observation. That's pretty much how he felt after a long tenure there. Greg's got a right to put his stamp on it, but Greg didn't inherit a, a program in disarray that needed to be cleaned up. It needed to be elevated, and I think you – I think you approach things a little differently. You guys may disagree. You've been coaches. You've come in that you've inherited coaching jobs. I never have. But I think from from the impression that I've gotten, you know, and, and you know how it is. When you, when you hear stuff, the, the truth usually lies somewhere in the middle. It's not on one extreme or the other. But I do think that the program was left in a pretty healthy state it needed to be it needed to get healthier it needed to get better but i don't know that it needed to be completely rebuilt and i think that may have been the mindset from the start and i think there was more than a little bit of resistance from the part of the the players on that i can't tell you whose fault that is i'm just telling you i think that's part of i think that in my opinion is part of what transpired and and why things didn't go better uh, in Greg Goff's one year. Doesn't mean that he's not a good coach. Doesn't mean that he didn't have a good plan. I don't know that that plan fit the circumstance, though, for, for what he inherited. Well, I, I, Chris, that's a great answer, a fair answer, and you know more about that situation than I do. I, I guess my point with the first question was is that – you know, everybody wants to be a, a comedian on Twitter and you want to, you know, tweet out something yeah. negative about a guy. But, you know, you want to make it real. Hey, this guy's got a family. He's got four daughters. You just described a daughter going into her senior year in high school. You got assistants that aren't making the money. And everybody's, oh, he's getting money. He's taken care of. You know, money ain't, it ain't about the money. <laughs> I mean, money helps. Right. Uh, but I, I wanted you to put a human side on it so people may think twice before they hit tweet just being so negative about a guy. Hey, he did it the way he thought he had to do it, whether it was right or wrong. Hey, you got what you wanted. The guy's gone. Uh, but there is a, a human side to it. And I thought your answer was uh, very good, so I appreciate that.